Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're gonna be setting up open speed test on our LAN two different ways. This is a really fun and simple project that you can do in less than 15 minutes, and basically it involves getting open speed test running in a Docker container. Now we're gonna do that two different ways, as I said. The first is on my Synology NAS, so in the Docker application on the Synology NAS. Second, we're going to build a Raspberry Pi running off of an M.2 boot drive, and then have open speed test running on that Raspberry Pi so that you can take the Raspberry Pi and plug it in anywhere, and basically have a portable LAN speed testing appliance. So let's get started. First things first though, what is Open Speed Test? Open Speed Test can be found at openspeedtest.com and essentially it is an HTML5 based speed test that you can use on your LAN you know, to test internal network speeds or you can put it out on a web server somewhere and test speeds out to an internet location. Uh, me personally, I like to use it for all of this sort of access point benchmark testing that I've been doing, as well as other tests, it's just nice to have a local non-internet speed test device so that I can test at LAN speeds. And theoretically, if you had you know this open speed test connected to something with a 10 gig NIC, you could do speed tests at up to those speeds. Uh, I personally have only ever had it on a gigabit NIC, but I've absolutely maxed out my gigabit speed testing, as we will see in just a moment. So if you go to openspeedtest.com and you scroll down, you can see a few things. Here is the source code if you want to compile it yourself. Here is the Docker command to run it. And you can also install it on your own website. So a bunch of different ways that this can be used. We're going to be doing the Docker method for this video. Now, if you already have your own Docker server, all you have to do is run this command in SSH and you're good to go with all of the basic settings and open speed tests will be will be up and running. However, I'm going to be doing this through the Docker GUI on my Synology NAS. So first things I do first thing I do here is I open the Docker app, I go to registry, and then I click on open speed or I search for open speed and I find open speed test slash latest. Now there's a bunch of different registries for this program. I'm going with the official one. Uh, it says open speed test slash latest. And basically we're just gonna click download. Choose the latest tag. And now we have a new image that popped up over here in images. So I'm gonna click on image. Here we can see open speed test latest. Oops, it switched around on me. Open speed test latest, and we're gonna say launch. Now going into all of the advanced settings that you can do with Docker is gonna be beyond the scope of this video. We're basically gonna be setting this up with just the default installation with one exception. I'm gonna click on advanced settings and under network, instead of running this as a bridge, I'm just gonna use the same network as my Docker host. Now again, not getting into too much advanced stuff, this is going to put open speed test on the same IP address as my Synology NAS at port 8080. So if you already have something running at port 8080, you're gonna to have to do some additional steps to either change the IP address that uh, open speed test is running on or change the port but keep it still as your Synology host IP address. All right, so we're gonna click apply and then next, and then just go ahead and click apply. And now if we come over to container, here we can see open speed test latest is running and it says it's been up for one minute. So let's go ahead and try to open up our open speed test by going to the IP address of our Synology NAS colon 8080 for port 8080. And there we go. So speed test, open speed test is up and running. Notice also though that it is HTTP, it is not secure. So you don't wanna do HTTPS unless, um, you know, one of the other Docker containers that I saw uh, wraps open speed test behind an NGINX container, which would allow you to then use Let's Encrypt and all this sort of stuff. But again, that's advanced stuff beyond the scope of this video. If you're testing, if you're just trying to do speed testing on your LAN, it doesn't necessarily have to be HTTPS. There's nothing really sensitive going back and forth and it's not going out to the internet anyways. So here is our open speed test. We're gonna click start. And yeah, look at that. So from my, con from my computer to the Synology NAS that's sitting right here in my cabinet, 
Uh, I'm getting basically full gigabit speeds on the download. Let's see what the upload looks like. And yeah, full gigabit speeds on the upload as well, or at least close to full gigabit. Now, I do have my Synology NAS link aggregated. So there are four gigabit NICs link aggregated off the back of the Synology NAS into one of my Ubiquiti switches. But uh, my computer here only has a gigabit NIC, right? So that's why we're seeing maxed out at those gigabit speeds. It's the, the bottleneck in this case is my computer's network card. All right, so there you go. We now have an open speed test server set up and running. That was super simple to do, very, very easy. But now, what if we want a little device, like a little Raspberry Pi, that we can have open speed tests running on and take it to different client locations when we want to run speed tests at those locations? Well, uh, very simple to do as well. And let me show you what I've got going on over here. All right, so I've got a little Raspberry Pi set up right here. This is the Raspberry Pi itself. The case that I'm using here is the Argon One M.2 case, which in actuality, I don't recommend this case. Uh, it's a really cool case. Like, I absolutely love the idea of this case. I think it's pretty well made. Uh, but the problem is that Argon One uh, has inc like terrible, terrible customer service. Uh, you'll notice that I have the bottom portion of the case. It's sort of, you know, it's a, it's supposed to go like this, typically. I have the bottom portion of this case connected with a longer USB 3 cable here uh, because the jumper that they sent me for this case originally uh, was DOA. It just didn't work. And I've contacted them numerous times about that. Uh, I got through finally one time and they said, sure, we'll send you a replacement. And they just never did. So... Again, if I didn't have, I had to buy this extra USB cable for this case to work. Uh, and again, I, I just can't recommend the case because of their customer service, which is terribly, terribly disappointing. Uh, but I have a keyboard, a mouse, and a little seven inch monitor hooked up to this Raspberry Pi. Again, you don't need all of this sort of stuff that I have. I wish I get this thing to stand up straight. There we go. Uh, but I basically just wanted to show you that there is no micro SD card running in this Raspberry Pi. Okay, I am indeed running off of this uh, SP, I think that stands for Silicon Power, uh, M.2 2280 SATA 3. Uh, M it's not an NVMe, it's just an M.2 drive, or I think an M.2 SSD. Uh, of course, you guys will correct me in the comments if I say anything even slightly wrong, so go ahead and put it down in the comments if uh, that's not exactly what that is. But I believe it's called a M.2 2280 SATA 3 SSD. Now, the reason that I'm using this M.2 instead of the micro SD card is because of the read and write speeds, right? This is a speed test, and I don't want the hard drive of the device or the micro SD card to be any sort of bottleneck here. And as a matter of fact, there is still a bottleneck happening, as we will see in just a moment. But this is my Raspberry Pi setup. Uh, but again, it'll work just fine with any Raspberry Pi, any case and just a USB out, like here's another Raspberry Pi right here. I could just take a USB out uh, into just like an SSD or like a, an external M.2 enclosure, and that would work just fine as well for this little appliance. I'll have a link down in the description below, but where I'm starting with this project is essentially where I ended in my blog post titled Raspberry Pi 4 Boot with USB. So if you click on the link below, it will take you to this blog post that will walk you through everything that you need to do uh, to get the Raspberry Pi set up exactly as I have it right here. So this is basically a vanilla install of Raspbian, but running off the M.2 drive. There's also an accompanying video that goes along with this blog post. I will also put a link to that somewhere on the screen here. Once you have your Raspberry Pi up to this stage, you know, booting off of that M.2, the first thing that we wanna do is just make sure that everything is completely up to date, which it should be if you just ran through these blog post instructions. If it's not up to date, or if you're installing this on a Raspberry Pi that's already been set up, you just wanna make sure you run through and do all of your updates by doing sudo apt uh, update and and sudo apt upgrade dash y. In my case, nothing to upgrade, so we're good to go. The first thing that we wanna do is install Docker. And you do that with this command here, curl 
small s, uppercase s, uppercase l, https colon slash slash get dot docker dot com pipe and then to sh. All of these instructions, by the way, I will have in a separate blog post linked down below if you want to follow along. So first do the blog post to get everything booting up on the M.2. Then you can follow the second blog post about how to install Docker as well as Portainer, which is a GUI for managing your Docker containers. And then finally on to open speed test. So first we're doing Docker. There we go, that took uh, less than one minute. And you'll notice here, if you would like to use Docker as a non-root user, you should now consider adding your user to the Docker group with something like blah, 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 right? So since we're logged in as the Pi user on this Raspberry Pi, we're gonna say sudo user mod dash A capital G Docker Pi, which is basically saying add the Pi user to the Docker group. And now that Pi user will have rights to make changes to the Docker containers. So real simple command and we are done. Next thing we need to do is create a, our first Docker container, which is a program called Portainer, which is basically a graphical user interface for managing Docker. So we're gonna say sudo docker pool portainer slash portainer dash ce colon Linux dash ARM. Basically saying we want the Linux ARM version of Portainer and we're just downloading that so that we can then uh, create that Docker container in the next step. All right, so we have now pulled down the Portainer image. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, run Portainer. There's a big long command to do that. Uh, it's basically a Docker command. I'm not gonna go over everything. Just copy and paste and you're good to go. Okay, that's it. Portainer should now be up and running on our Raspberry Pi on port 9000. So if I say IPA, we can see that this system is running on 192.168.200.122. So let's bring that up. We're gonna say 192.168.200.122 colon 9000. And there we go. So now we need to create our portainer admin user. In my case, you could use admin and create your own password for it. I'm just gonna use the same credentials that I have for my Raspberry Pi because I like to make things easy on myself. So username pi and then my pi password. Once you're done, click create user. And now we're going to set this up for Docker. We wanna manage the local Docker environment. And notice this note down here says, ensure that you've started the portainer container with the following Docker flag. And it's this dash V var run Docker socket colon var run Docker dot sock. If we go back to our command history, you can see that we have dash V, we have the information that we need, right? So dash V var run docker dot sock colon slash var run docker sock. So we should be good to go. Uh, click connect. And there we go. So this is basically showing us our local Docker instance. If we were using Portainer, we could also connect out to other instances of Docker on other servers and they would be listed here. But since we just have the one local instance, we're gonna click on that. And now we can see that we have one image and one container, which is our portainer container that we just set up. Now let's go ahead and install open speed test. Now to install open speed test, uh, you actually probably could do it through portainer, but it's gonna be more complicated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to SSH and we're gonna grab the information from openspeedtest.com. So if you just go right here, Docker run, blah, 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 all of this stuff. We're just gonna copy this command bring up SSH, we're gonna say sudo, and then shift insert to paste that command in and enter. And now what this is gonna do is it's gonna go out, it's gonna grab the latest open speed test uh, files and the container and just set it up in Docker and that's it. It took less time to uh, install it than it took me to explain it. So now we should be able to just go to HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.200.122. And there we have open speed test up and running. Now let's go ahead and run a speed test from my computer. Now remember, the speed test that I ran to my Synology NAS took full bandwidth from my gigabit NIC on this computer. Let's see what happens on the Raspberry Pi. All right, so you see that? We're hitting about 
about 700 megabits per second, not full gigabit speed on the download. Now watch the upload. On the upload, we're getting full gigabit speed. So if you guys have the explanation for why this is happening, let me know. But I've seen this same thing consistently on the three Raspberry Pis that I've built with this open speed test Docker container the same exact way that I've done here. It shouldn't be the M.2 drive because the M.2 drive has something like 540 megabytes, not megabits, megabytes per second uh, of read write speed. So I don't believe that the drive itself is the limiting factor here. I don't think that's the bottleneck. I think it might be the USB 3 bus on the Raspberry Pi. Maybe it's some sort of shared bus that's bringing down those speeds. But regardless, this still is, you know, pretty decent speeds out of a little tiny Raspberry Pi uh, application, which again, you can take this to uh, any sort of any client site or something like that. And you'd at least be able to see up to, you know, about three quarters of a gigabit by one gigabit up, you know, how much speed you can get out of devices on that local network. So if you know that this is the maximum that you're gonna see with your Raspberry Pi, anything less than that means that there's some sort of problem, issue, or bottleneck on the local area network that you're testing. One way that this could be improved, well, I should say multiple ways. This could be improved a number of ways. I mean, if you were gonna run this on your web server, certainly you would want to set it up as HTTPS and not just HTTP. I would love to have a little script. If you guys can write this for me, hit me up on Discord and I will update the blog post, but I'd love a little script that upon boot up, when this device, you know, it's a DHCP'd uh, NIC on the Raspberry Pi. So if you take it to different networks to do speed tests, it's gonna have a different IP address all the time. And if you didn't have the monitor to check, or if you'd have to, you know, you're gonna have to go through DHCP leases to find the right IP address or whatever, it'd be really cool if this little Raspberry Pi speed testing appliance could just shoot out an email or an SMS or something with its IP address uh, as soon as it's it receives one and is plugged in, right? So maybe just have it like, some sort of cron job that has a 60 second delay after it, it boots up. And as soon as it has that network or it has the network information, the IP address, it sends an email to you and it says, hey, my email address is XYZ, right? That would be pretty awesome uh, to set that up. I'm sure it's super easy to do and anyone who knows how to do it could probably do it in two seconds. Uh, but I did not take the time to figure out how to do it for this video. Other than that, if you know why the bottleneck on the Raspberry Pi might potentially be happening, I'd love to hear about that as well. I don't know if it's something that can be resolved with this Raspberry Pi 4 that I'm using, but you know, maybe there is something that can be done about the bottleneck as well. That would be great to be able to get full gigabit uh, ethernet speeds uh, out of this Raspberry Pi open speed test uh, setup. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.